In this lesson, we're going to quickly go over the After Effects interface. Okay, so I'm starting out here in 03 underscore begin, but these are the project files from a different project that we've created in a different course. That's the watercolor course. And the reason why I'm working with these project files is simply because I want you to kind of see what a finished project looks like. And all we're going to be talking about is the interface. So you don't need to worry about following along, trying to recreate anything that I'm going to be doing in this lesson. I just want you to watch and pay attention to the way that I'm moving around in After Effects, just because it's important to get an idea of where everything is just to start off. So I'm also just starting here with this finished project so you can get an idea of what we would create if we had gone through this other project and it's just more fleshed out than where we were by the end of the last lesson. Okay, so just to get started here, we have our menu, which is all along here at the top. And as in most programs, this is going to be your bread and butter. This is where you're going to go for a lot of the things that you need. And really, you can find almost anything in this panel, but it's also going to be located in other places in After Effects too. So as you work more and you find out more things, you'll get shortcuts and you'll just really develop your own workflow because eventually it becomes a little bit too time consuming to come up here to the menu, drill down through all of the different things and find what you're looking for. So. The next thing that we talk about besides just this menu here at the top is the panels. And that's going to be anything you see here that almost looks like it has a little tab. All of these different things are panels. And just to get you an idea of how many different panels there are in After Effects, if I come up here to Workspace and drop down that standard and click All Panels, we see that this opens up a whole lot more panels over here on the right side. So there are going to be some specific panels that I want to mention now. So we have the Tool Panel, which is up here at the top, and it really looks just a little bit different because it was before just in that straight line, but you can bring it out if you want to. I really like keeping mine at the top because then I always know where it is. And you can see that I can move this around and as I move it to different places, it kind of snaps into different areas. So I always bring mine right up to the top till it kind of has that greenish teal look. And then when I release it, it'll snap right back into place there. So if you ever accidentally grab it out of place and you want it to go right back where it was, you can just bring it up there to the top and as you click and drag it, that green line will appear and you can just put it back in place. Now there's three tools right here off the bat that I want to show you that you're going to need to navigate around in After Effects and that's going to be these three tools in that tool panel right there. This is the selection tool, the hand tool, and the zoom tool. The selection tool is going to be what you use anytime you want to click on something at all. So you don't have to necessarily have the selection tool selected if I want to click something here on my timeline, but anything I want to click here in my composition, I'm going to want to use the selection tool. So I'm just going to pull this back here and I'm just clicking on this mask and you can see how that moves that around. I'm just using the selection tool to do that. The next tool is my hand tool. So I'm going to click that. And if you're familiar with Photoshop, it also has a hand tool. And really what that does is you can simply gr grab something and drag it around. And maybe let's say I had used the zoom tool, which is the next tool we'll be talking about. So I'll go ahead and show you that now. We'll zoom in a little bit. This is pretty self-explanatory. If you have the zoom tool, it's going to default to zoom in. So I just click and that's going to zoom me in. It may just take a moment because that project is pretty detailed. And now if I use that hand tool, you can see that that's just going to kind of pan me around that composition and I can see all the different parts of it since I'm in kind of a, 
a little bit of a confined work area here when I'm zoomed into 100% just because of how large the composition is at 100%. So the zoom tool and the hand tool definitely work together. And so one of the quick ways that you can get around having to go up here to the tool panel and click those tools is simply by using some keyboard shortcuts. So let's say I have the selection tool already selected there. And by the way, the keyboard shortcut to jump over to your selection tool is the V key. So you can just hit the V key and it'll switch you to the selection tool. So let's say I'm having the selection tool selected right now and I want to zoom in. Instead of coming up here and grabbing the zoom tool, I can simply use the wheel on my mouse. So I'm just going to click that forward once and that will zoom me in a little bit further. Now let's say I want to pan around and I don't really feel like coming up here and grabbing the hand tool. I can just hold the space bar and no matter what tool I have selected, maybe I'm drawing a mask and I'm using some other tool. I don't have to get out of that tool. I can simply hold the space bar and then click and drag to pull me around the different parts of that composition. And then when I let up on the space bar, it'll take me back to the other tool that I had before. So that's pretty awesome. Makes it really easy for you to navigate, especially when you're doing something really detailed and then you need to move up. Let's say maybe I'm doing something along this line here. I want to move up to this point. I can just use that tool to go up and see where I need to go next without having to get out of the tool that I was using before. So I love that function. Okay, the next thing that I want to talk about is not going to be any more tools. We'll go over those kind of as we need them throughout the rest of the course. The next thing I want to talk about is a specific panel. So you remember I was mentioning panels earlier. I want to talk about the project panel. So that's what you see over here on the left. And I can kind of go down through these folders here and you see there's lots of different things and this is going to be where really everything is stored. Anything you bring in or really anything you create in After Effects is going to be stored in some way or other here in the project panel. And this we'll go into more detail about later on, but just know that this is where all that stuff is going to live. If you create something maybe in Photoshop or Illustrator and bring it into After Effects, it's going to be here on the left. And if you create a composition like we did in our last lesson. It's going to be over here in your project panel. The next thing I want to talk about are the effect controls and that's the panel right underneath the project panel by default. So to get to it I just have to click next to its name right there and it's going to bring this up. Now I don't have any effects applied to the layer that I have selected in the timeline here. So let me just navigate to something really quick that has an effect applied to it. And we see that now the effect controls are populated with the different properties that are causing that effect. So that's how you start to control an effect once you have applied it. So how do I apply an effect? That's going to be over here in the effects and presets panel. Now it seems almost like this panel could be a little bit unimportant just because of the way it's been stacked over here with all these other panels. But make no mistake, this is going to be one of the more important panels that we will use. So effects and presets and the effects controls panel are linked together in that this is where you find an effect that you would want to use and then you can simply drag it onto the layer that you want to use it on. And then once you want to start kind of tweaking that effect, you're going to do it over here in effect controls. Now don't get overwhelmed. This is going to be explored in much more detail later in the course. I just want you to know where these two things are. Okay, next is going to be the composition viewer, which is pretty obvious that that is this area right here. Anytime I want to look at what I'm creating or maybe move something on my timeline and see what's actually happening at that point in time, we see the change here in the composition viewer. The next thing, which I've alluded to a couple of times, is the timeline, which is this panel down here. Now, any composition that I may have created is going to be a tab along the top of the timeline, and I can click those different tabs to find different things with the different layers and their times. So. I can maybe just kind of click through here and show you. You can kind of see the duration there from zero to, let's see, almost about 20 seconds there at the end. So this is the actual timeline right here. And then these are the layers within that timeline. 
Another panel that's going to be important is the preview panel. So we can find that up here. I'm just going to drag this down so you can see it. This is going to be where you would select any kind of specific settings that you would want to use if you wanted to play back your animation. Now later on we'll be using keyboard shortcuts to play back our animation like a pro, but for now you're just going to be using the preview panel um, until you get used to using some more of those keyboard shortcuts. And then anytime you want to do something specific with the way you play it back, if maybe your computer's slowing down a little bit. You can come in here, change some of these options, and your preview is going to work just a lot better for what you need. So we'll go over how to change that later on. Just know that that is right there. Now I want to talk a little bit just about what columns mean. The columns are going to be their different layers or just really properties or examples of things that are stacked up in a column. So these layers are creating a column. The different kinds of panels that have columns in them are going to be your timeline, which you see here, your project panel. We see that this is creating a column and also the render queue. So if I come over here to the render queue, I don't have anything added, but if I had a few different things I wanted to render out, they would stack up in a column as well. So there's just a little bit to remember kind of that sometimes we're looking at our different things in this more linear way. So you can kind of see your layers here, but they're also stacked in a column. So just a little bit of an organizational thing to notice. Don't get too hung up on that just yet. Now, another thing I want you to think about are context menus. And I'm not going to be showing you a lot of context menus throughout this tutorial, simply because when you're working in After Effects, a lot of times the context menus fall off the edges of your recording area. So if you were recording this lesson, you would be able to see it, but you can't see it on my screen. So the way you get to a context menu is simply by, you know, let's say I want to look at a context menu here in my timeline. I'm just going to right click. And we see that this brings up a few different options. And that context menu changes based on what I click on. So maybe now I'm going to do it for a layer. And you see I get a totally different context menu by right clicking a layer as opposed to this empty area here. So this is going to give you some really specific things you can do for that particular layer. And you're going to get more used to the different kinds of context menus you might need and they will probably become a part of your workflow but I'm going to be showing you how to get to them through a little bit more straightforward way throughout this course. And Another thing that we're going to be talking about a little bit are keyboard shortcuts. Now again, I'm going to try every time to show you something, how to really how to get to something through this area here at the top, the menu. But sometimes you're going to want to use a keyboard shortcut. So the first keyboard shortcut that if you don't know, you definitely need to know is Control Z and that is the undo button. So let's say I select this layer and I accidentally delete it. If I want to undo that, I'm just going to hold control and hit Z and it's going to bring it back for me. So that's a keyboard shortcut that I want you to use all the time. I want you to get used to it because that's the beauty of being able to work on the computer and we're not having to draw all of this stuff out by hand. We are able to undo something if we make a mistake. So we're going to go over more keyboard shortcuts later on throughout the course. Just remember that one for now. So in this lesson, we discuss the interface of After Effects just to give us an overview of some of those key features you'll need to know to be able to navigate your way through this powerful program.